Hello everyone. My name is Rav, otherwise known as Rarvin. Um, most of you know me. Do you know me as Rav? I am the current creator of Gabberary.net. I do have a partner in that, but this is just my show. Maybe one day I'll get him on. Maybe not. But if you guys haven't guessed yet, this entire conversation here is about the ban and restricted update that was released on October 16th of 2023. The first card on the ban list was Sword of Avarice. Sword of Avarice was a card that was pretty much a staple in almost every single Crux deck. It was a card that really helped Crux become that tier one staple of fast speed, inter, um, fast speed draw, refill your hand, get maybe some answers to cards, or pretty much set up your entire combo turn pretty quickly. It was a card that was pretty much asking to be banned from the start. Um, a lot of people are happy to see it gone. And the main reason wasn't even because of design space or anything like that. It wasn't sort of a, it wasn't um sort of ascension, not sort of ascension, yeah, sort of ascension. Um, it was a card that really just didn't benefit new player interaction too much. Like new players would come in, they'll see this sword looping, you go, okay, it was cool at first, but when they have it happening to them over and over, just drawing eight cards in a single turn, even on before your opponent's recollection or even at the end of your turn. It really turned a lot of players off from wanting to play the game. I think this was a ban that was justified. I won't be surprised if come ALC or set four, maybe even set five, we see sort of Avarice come off the ban list as sort of a testing the waters or even in a version that might make a, um, a vault version of it that we'll speak later on of what the vault is. But just something that might sort of trinkle it back into the meta as things sort of, you know, calm down and we get it off the restrictions list. Another card that is banned is Reckless Conversion. Reckless Conversion was a card that, as a Rye player, I'm sad. <laughs> I am sad to see the card go. Um, it was a card that really made things like Arcane Disposition really smooth um, when you were drawing your three and trying to pay to recollect, to recollect your whole hand. There's some lines with it. I mean, granted, it was a time walk for Rye decks. Uh, time walking is pretty much getting an extra turn, which is what Reckless Conversion did. You were pretty much draw a whole bunch of cards, Reckless conversion your entire memory back into your hand and then just try and combo off off that turn. I can see why it was banned. Um, I don't like it personally, but I can see why I'm biased. I'm a ride player. I like sling, uh, slinging spells and everything of the sort. So seeing something like that banned, it was really just, it's sad. It hits, you know? It's a card that I'm sort of, like I said, sad to see banned, but it was justified, it was needed. Um, where Rye stands after the fact is going to be seen. I mean, there's a whole bunch of Rye players, Rye, um, pretty much Rye lovers. Between myself, there's Leo, um, a couple others I'm probably forgetting the name of, that really liked playing Rye, different variants of Rye. There was the Wind Rye that was going around with Limelight before FTC was sort of kicking around with Arcane Elemental. So those might see a comeback, but we'll see what happens going forward. Before we get into proxy result, we're going to talk to you real quick about the sort of category one of the ban list. Category one is sort of the watch list. They're not really problematic right now in the environment, but it might cause some future issues down the line, design space, etc. Um, some cards that been there but haven't left. We have Creative Shock that's been there pretty much since the start. We have Tactful Sergeant, which is there, which was um, a category, still category one. We added a new card in Veruk, uh, Freezing Hail that's been there for a while. Crystal Empowerment's a new card added in this place. So Creative Shock is a card that I can see why it might be design limited. I personally don't think that card's unhealthy, but I can see why it might limit design. It's a very, I think, balanced card for the most part. The draw two, discard a card, you're pretty much netting one, if anything, if possible every time. So I don't think it's something that is going to be banned just because of pure power. Same thing with sort of Tactful Sergeant. Tactful Sergeant really might limit some design choices because it's a card that on enter, if your champion attacked, put a card in your memory. Um, it's a pretty decent card. It might limit some design space, especially if you're starting to see some more metas come out where people are attacking more. It might really set up that hand advantage with also flicker effects. Like Displace, which is also on this watch list. Displace is honestly a really strong card. A lot of people call this gold strong during FTC, you know, spoiler season. So it's definitely not surprising to see Displace on here, but there's interactions that can happen where you have a tactful sergeant on the field. You Displace it. You do a couple of what we call flicker effects and you just drop a good amount of cards into your memory and just get a severe advantage over your opponent. Another card on here, which isn't surprising, but very limiting is Rook. Rook is a pretty much a uh, any damage dealt by fire element, so she control can't be prevented. 
It's a card that's really going to limit design space. I mean, you have a card that's with there's fireballs, sparkle lights, any other future burn spells really has to play around the fact that, oh, if I have a Rook, I get to steal love in the face unprevented, which really makes cards really strong as well as really limiting the design space that people might have to create other strong fire spell cards. Um, I won't be surprised this sees a ban or restrict list at some point. Right now, it's definitely needs to be watched, especially if you start seeing some weird fire list pop up with fireballs um, and others. But I think right now it might be interesting to see. Then they have Freezing Hail, which has been here for a while. This was on here back during the time we had um, leveling up your champion on, awoke, awoke them, which in Freezing Hail will help prevent that. And Freezing Hail is really strong at preventing some champions from waking up, really preventing the attack. I can sort of see why it might be in design space. I'm not fully sure I agree with it, but the devs know better than myself. I'm more of a pilot than I am a brewer, so I can't. I, you just give me a deck, I'll play it. And then Crystal of Empowerment. So this is a card that I'm honestly not shocked. It might not be in the category one, uh, two section because their Crystal of Empowerment is a really strong card. The banish from the game two plus plus two levels is really good. And Fire Ride, you're in pretty much Merlin decks that gives the plus two level for um, the mag uh, increasing majesty. And a couple of other cards that might come through that really is level preventing, as well as like say, we're talking Rhapsody with Ember Song. A lot of cards in this game really interact with what your level is. And Crystal and Palmer really became a staple in a couple of those decks. And with it, it sort of became a must include into the material decks. And something like that really, you know, really sometimes it limits design space as a whole. But moving on to that, we had a couple other announcements happening. We had the announcement of Proxy, Proxy is Vault cards. And we had a couple of two cards that came on. We had the Scepter of Lumi Lumina. 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 Scepter. Yeah. Scepter. Um, the Scepter that was sort of spoiled during Ascent Houston. Um, I didn't make a video for that. I should have. I went I went for three, but we're not going to talk about that. We had the art spoiled at Ascent Houston, and now we finally have the abilities of what it does. It is a one cost. As long as each player controls a water element champion. You can activate this card from your material deck, meaning almost like Toma Sacred Lightning. You can play it during your main phase and have it come in at slow speed. But you still have to pay its cost. It can also still be used in non-water mirrors. You just have to do it during your materialization phase. And then whenever your champion levels up, deal four damage to the target champion you control. For clarity, leveling up does not mean adding leveling counters. Leveling up is almost referred to dungeon guide. Leveling up is when you go from level zero the level one Rai, level two Rai, level three Rai, or anything that sort of plays the next in the lineage, or if you have a lineage break champion in terms of former Merlin, if you don't go to level three Merlin or Tristan, you have the ways that those also count as a level up, but nothing like gaining a level counter counts as a level up for the cards effect. And then you had the final portion of it, which is pay five banish draw two cards, which I think is really good. It's a card that I think is gonna really help water as a whole. Just having it out there and at the end of an opponent's turn that tapped out drawing two cards. You, part of the biggest issue Water had was sort of refilling their hand as they're controlling the board, controlling resources, and they don't have anything to close or refill their hand. They keep that momentum going and they sort of put it out. So I'm really hoping Scepter really smooth these out going forward. And I think it's something that we really have to keep an eye on for the next upcoming few uh, decks. That we're and the second card we've got with the Vault is Stone Scale Band. It's a class bonus for Tamer. On enter, discard up to three allied cards from your hand and our memory, then draw that many cards. As a one cost, tap until the turn you may activate cards as though they had fast activation. Uh, for some of us MTG players, we call that flash. So this pretty much lets the tamer start getting cards in at the end of their opponent's turn or during some key utilization instead of some blockers or anything like that that might really be good. We saw recently with um, True Champion Gaming's tournament, we did see this Stone Scale Band come in, be activated, and pay the Owl that let them glimpse to at the end of the opponent's turn. So they can sort of step their draws for the next turn. I think this card's going to be really good. Um, this card really helps Sylvie. I don't know if it's going to make it a Tier 1 deck or Tier 2 deck, but I think this card's really... Eh, I might actually make it Tier 2. But I think this card's really going to help smooth out a little bit of the issues that Sylvie had as well as Alan and the Tamer. With Proxy's Vault, there was an article announced on October 15th of what Proxy's Vault does. What it is is that these are fully prox proxyable. Proxy? Proxyable? Proxy. We're just going to go with Proxy. Proxy cards that you can go ahead, send it to your printer, print out a full color copy of it, and then stick it into your material deck. So 
but what it requires is having a sleeved card with a GA card already in it, and then you take the printout per version of the paper and slide it over that card into your material deck. This means that as a proxy, it is legal to be used in tournaments. Um, it is legal for a year, the end of the year after the card is printed. So for example, we have Stone Scalebound and Scepter. In the bottom right corner, they list a 2023 Weebs of the Shore. These cards are legal in proxy form until December 31st of 2024. Anytime after that to use these cards, you must have the physical version of the cards. Now you may be wondering, how do I get the physical version of these cards? Well, in order to get the physical version of the cards, you must attend an Ascent, or sort of the Ascent, say Houston, and you will have Worlds, and you'll have Nats. I'm not sure on Regionals yet. Um, I have to keep an eye on that. I don't think the Regionals will have them, but definitely the major versions like Ascent will have the physical version of these cards, and then we'll find out what happens when they extra unused, and people that might sell them on TCG Player going forward. But those are the ways to obtain the physical version of the cards for your material deck, and they must be used in tournament play. Now for the time window I spoke about before, you can use the proxy version for tournament play, but anything like an Ascent or at Worlds or Nets, you must use the physical version of the card inside of the same sleeves as well for your material deck. Now that we got the ban out of the way and the restricted, and everything else in the sadness. Now what does this mean for the meta coming forward? We have store championships happening with Fractured Crown. We have regionals happening in Fractured Crown. Um, so. What should we be looking to play? What should we be practicing? What should we be warming up on? So to start, Caben said it, Fueler said it. If you say have a store championship next week, which I don't think there's a single store championship next week or a regional, but Fire Lorraine or Aggro is where you want to be. That's the deck you should be learning. This is the deck you probably should be getting the most practice on, what your mirrors are like. It's the deck that's going to be easy to pick up in the shortest time span. Now I'm not saying this is the meta for all of FTC. I'm just saying if you had something to play ASAP and you needed it now, learn aggro. This could be Fire Lorraine, which is the, you know, Honing Steel, Rending Flames version where Lorraine's just going wide with weapons, and I'm going on a destructive face with weapons. You have Fire Lorraine aggro, which is just taking the Xanders, the Hasty Messengers, the Clumsy Apprentices, and those cards of the like, and just going with allies, as well as wind allies. You can go ahead and look at Cabot's Ascent winning video and his Ascent deck list that will be posted in the description of sort of what wind allies is and what to expect from that list. Those are what I think is sort of up near the top right now. There could be arguments made for Fire Xander. I think Fire Xander is a little bit low, below Fire Lorraine. It's a little bit harder to play and pilot. It's not as consistent. Um, I mean, we had one in the top 32 at Ascent, but there was about, I think seven showing and only one made the top 32. So it's a list that might take some practice on, but if you need something SAP, just go ahead and learn Fire Lorraine instead. Some of the next tier decks, I want tier 1.5, almost tier two. Like I said, you can have the Fire Xander in here. Then we can go ahead and talk about Fire Rye. Fire Rye is a card that was a uh, deck that recently just had the Reckless Conversion ban happen, which really took us from a tier one deck and knocked it down a few pegs and sort of made it more fair. Um, there's gonna be some brewing happening. There's a whole bunch of people brewing Fire Rye as a whole. And I think the deck isn't dead as much as I was spouting the deck dead. I think it might still have a chance. You might have to adjust some numbers around, adjust a couple of cards, don't add in the Stormcaller, Power Overwhelming, some couple of things to really smooth out the list. But I think the list is still going to do pretty well into the field. I mean, it's weak as it's aggro, so you're going to try to throw in some Anger Disguise, maybe some other board wipe cards to really help smooth it out. But it's not something that's going to be completely ruined just yet, but it's going to take some tweaking. Don't expect the same results you were getting with it before, that's for sure. Next on the list is another Rye. I've been seeing Wind Rye uh, spoken about. This was something that was popular during DOA. It might show up its head again because this cheating level is level three and then playing something like Arcane Elemental or a couple other cards that might really smooth it out as a whole um, with Mana Weaver and Arcane Blast still as well as copying it as with the um, Enlightened Package as well as Wind Rider Evoker and the Scepter that also gives you Enlightened Counters. So it might be an Enlightened Encountered Wind Rye deck it's something I'm not sold on. I might have to see it practice more. I might have its good matchups, but right now into the field, I'm not really feeling that great about it. It's definitely not not what you're expecting from a Rye deck, and it might go a completely different way uh, going forward. Some cards on uh, deck on the Rise, though. <laughs> rise. I wish. Let's 
Deck on the wise though is Watermelon. So we just saw Watermelon go ahead and take second place in, K in TCG's ban tournament. So Watermelon, I think, might have gotten a little bit better. It's a little bit slower now with the Crux package banned, but you see some issues being smoothed out. As long as it's to deal with a counter Merlin deck and say Fire Merlin, just drawing a bunch of cards and comboing off quicker than they can even establish. So Watermelon is, a, I think, a list that it's going to take some refining, but you're going to see it on the rise a little bit more going forward. And I think it's something that you might be able to sneak out a couple wins at a store championship or anything at a regional with if you have the right refined list for the meta that you're expecting there. It's not something that I think will win an Ascent. I think it's something that's going to place very well depending on matchups. Yeah, if it's something you enjoy, I would say go ahead and pick it up. We did have Water Lorraine sneak some wins out in DOA meta, store championships near the very end. So it is something that you might expect to see a little bit further on into FTC, FTC store championships as well. Speaking of Merlin, when Merlin, gone. I mean, people might say it's not dead. I, I'm not a fan of it. I don't think it's going to do that well, but I might be wrong. That's all I'm going to say on the subject. Sylvie. So we did a couple of Sylvie lists make it to the semifinals of the TCG tournament. And I think Sylvie with the new uh, vault card and the meta sort of slowing down a little bit is really going to be beneficial. I don't think it's going to be the top dog, no pun intended, in the meta, but I think it's something to really keep an eye on. It. Those Sylvie enjoyers are really going to be happy. If you were playing Sylvie long before, you definitely have something to play now. It could be Dawn of Atches, Prismatic, which still aren't the best list. But it's something that might really help smooth out Sylvie a little bit with this card now with the flash effects and everything else slowing down around. And then my sleeper. My sleeper is Wind, Z uh, Wind Xander, Wind Assassin with Tristan. I think Wind Assassin might have some plays going forward with the preparation counters, effects of swinging and restanding with a couple of different Assassin Wind cards that do that. Um, I don't have a list just yet, yet, but I think it's something that can be really sneaking out some wins. I think it's a list that people should be keeping an eye on going forward. And I might have spoiled someone's spicy tech. I mean, it's my spicy tech. I'm working on it myself. So if I'm building it, can't be that spicy. I'm not a, I'm not a brewer. But I think it's something that you, people should really keep an eye on. It might sneak out some wins. It might sneak out a store championship to get you those um, promo Nats invites. So definitely keep an eye on Assassin moving forward. Well, everyone, that's all I got for you today. Um, thank you for watching the video. I, it's going to be probably poorly edited, poorly choppy. Uh, yeah, it's going to be probably a mess. Sounds about right. Sounds about how I do things. I mean, people saw my Gabbery conversion and that was horrible. So seems on par. I'm brand. But like I said, thank you everyone for watching and I hope you have a good one. Peace.